Viewer discretion is advised. For the last three years, Chef Ramsay has whipped aspiring chefs into shape on Hell's Kitchen. This is painful! Get out! Out! Now, Gordon Ramsay, the most successful restaurateur on the planet, with critically acclaimed restaurants in London, Dubai, Tokyo, and New York, is crisscrossing America for the most difficult assignment of his career. This is disgusting! I am gobsmacked. Turning around America's kitchen nightmares. Please help me! Each week, he will go to restaurants on the brink of disaster. There is no more money. He's not doing his job. This place is a disaster zone. I put so much into it. But to get these restaurants back on track, Chef Ramsay will hold nothing back. I've never, ever, ever, ever met someone I believe in as little as you. It will be intense. Too old, you dirty pig. Would we need a death in the restaurant before some gets a grip? I thought your food was crap. I'd rather have this conversation downstairs. You it will be emotional. You're a That's it! Seriously, I'm pissed off. It's not my fault. Why did you keep eating if it was that bad? Just go! Just go! And it will be shocking. Fire them on the spot. Oh, my God. Look at them. It's Rancid is rotten. I've eaten it. I feel like spitting out both of them. I think this place will run better without you. Can you go and tell them that the kitchen is closed? We're shut. It's the luckiest day of their lives. We're shut for tonight. We're shut for the night. We will make this a success. Put your hand up and swear to God. In the end, you will see dramatic turnarounds. Aren't they horrible? <laughs> of not just the restaurants. But the people who work in them. I'll never forget you, man. The best of my life, bro. You're the best, man. And while most appreciate his help, God bless you. You are a wonderful person. Others aren't so grateful. Oh, my f get you. Jeff, I know you can hear me. Don't run. Why is this guy here? Who the f are you to turn around and tell me when you were like a pig? You yeah. pig. Goodbye, chef. Good luck, loser. Get ready as Chef Ramsay turns America's kitchen nightmares. Thank God for what to receive. May the Lord not kill me with food poisoning. Back into dreams. Please do not screw it up. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, one of Long Island's most historical and successful restaurants has become a local disaster. It's in a dumpster now. This place is falling apart. There's a stink in this place so bad. And the owners, a mother and her son. He's looking for a man. You are going to apologize. Keep dreaming, Peter. Are at each other's throats. Take charge. Hey, don't do this, Mom. Take charge. If Chef Ramsay can't help me, it's done. Gordon has one week to turn it around. What am I doing wrong? Touch the wall! You dirty pig! But faces an extremely uphill battle. You kill! Whatever customers we got left. The head chef is arrogant. Let him do what he wants. The sous chef doesn't care. Whatever. The waitresses are disorganized. Is that yours or mine, Diane? This, this is mine! And the kitchen... This is disgusting! ...is the dirtiest kitchen Gordon has ever seen. Look at that. You didn't see that? I didn't see that. I've eaten it! How will Gordon return the seascape to its former glory? You're running a business, and if you don't want to run it as a business, close it. Get ready for some drastic measures. Nothing's been coked in here this evening. We're going down, now. Tonight, on Kitchen Nightmares. I slip New York. Rich with history and community spirit. But a crown jewel of this seaside village, the Seascape Inn, is on the verge of collapse. The owners are a mother named Irene and a son named Peter. You can't put him in a dining room. Tell him to shut the up. Tell him to get out of here. What's the big deal? Close the doors if you don't like him. The Seascape has been around since 1962. We've been declared the oldest restaurant in the town of Islip. In the glory days at the Seascape, my father, he was here when they were doing 300 covers on a Saturday night, and the place was alive, and everybody was smiling, making money. There was love everywhere, and you could feel it when you walked into the Seascape. I started to work here at the Seascape in 1967. It was buzzing. You, you wouldn't believe 
the amount of customers we had on Saturday night, they'd actually stand on line outside the door. The restaurant? It's in a dumpster now. I don't even like to tell people I work here anymore. There's a lot of contributing factors of why, you know, people don't come back. We've had complaints about that sewage smell. There was a stink in this place so bad, and I can't even believe anybody came in at all. Maybe the reason why the restaurant has gone down in the last past two years, because Chef Doug is not listening to a word I say. Doesn't make a difference. If I want it served in that, that's what I want it served in. I've been doing this 38 years. I went to the Culinary Institute of America. I worked in successful restaurants, world-renowned. I like having the command in the kitchen. Anybody's got a problem with it, they can come to me. I'm going to say my piece wherever I go, to whoever I meet. doesn't matter their status. I really don't care. Don't serve it in that. That's all you got to do. It's that simple. Doug's loud and obnoxious. If you want to rock, let's rock. He's crazy. My father, he was a hands-on in the kitchen. I was always the guy that was out front. And two years ago, my father passed away. After he passed away, he did hurt us. The rug is being pulled out from under me, and I got to do something about it. I need 800 to a million dollars to save the seascape. I don't want my doors to close, but what am I doing wrong? Chef Ramsay is my last hope, because if Chef Ramsay can't help me, it's done. I'm not wasting more time. This building's 105 years old. And when this restaurant first opened 40 years ago, it was a hot spot in town. Now it's at the bottom. I'm starting to understand why. What is that pile of there? God. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? How are you doing? And first name, sorry? Peter. Peter, Gordon, good to see you. His height threw me off. Didn't realize how tall he was. Does make you a little bit more intimidating. Mom, this is Gordon Ramsay. Nice to it see you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Not at all. I was very impressed with him. Very handsome, very tall, blonde, good looking, actually. If it was like 20 years ago, I would have said, you know what? We connect. This is uh, the veteran waitress, Marilyn. Wow. Who's been here since uh, the beginning. And when you say the beginning, how long have you been here? Well, I really started in 1967. 67? Right. I left. I was born then. Maybe Chef Ramsey's going to tell me I just shouldn't be here. I'm too old. And I'd respect him if he said that. I'll be out the door. And this is Chef Doug. Doug, nice how are you? Very nice. Nice mini skirt there. What is that? An apron? Yeah. What? Oh, okay. This, yeah, is it? Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> nice. That's my wiping rag. That's your wiping rag. Gordon Ramsay coming here to me, it's a slap in the face. Let's go in the dining room. Let's go. Let's have a blast. All right. Yeah. Okay. You run the place, and your mum assists you. Yes. Yes. Describe Seascape for me. It's a Titanic. It was a luxury liner, <laughs> and it's sinking. I see it as a very poorly run restaurant. That's the last time she gave me a compliment. Because you just don't listen, and that's why compliments are very hard to come by. God. Right now, I'm hungry. I want to taste the food, and let's meet after, shall we? Why not? Absolutely. Is there anything else that I need to know before I start eating? The Board of Health came here, and believe me, they gave us 95, so the place is clean. Right, where should I go for, uh... Anywhere you like? Take the corner, take Thank you. Comfortable over yeah. there. Thank you. You're so welcome. I was excited. Uh, little butterflies in the stomach. I'm gonna be insulted by the best chef in the world. There's a really bad smell in here. Sewage. God. I can't believe people come in here. OK, well, I'll start off with the um, crab cakes, please. OK. I like the idea of the pesto lobster ravioli. I'll go for the Atlantic salmon uh, blackened, please. Call me a pig. OK. Huh? I'm hungry. Yeah, well, at least she's honest. The place stinks. I feel this place is a nightmare. I don't you haven't seen nothing yet. <laughs> uh, who's this? That's Chef Ramsay. OK, no problem. Uh, one order of crab cakes. Oh, this place is falling apart. Let's hope the food's good. Oh, hey, come here, crab cakes. Parsley everywhere. God. No. 
that gate just falls apart. A bit like the decor. You touch it, it just disintegrates. They're not fresh. They've got it wrong on the menu. It's not a crab cake. It's a cake. Because I feel if I eat any more, I'll be for the next 105 years. Are they frozen? I don't think so. Would you ask them for me? Sure. They taste frozen. OK. Thank you. Doug, you make the crab cakes here, right? Yes. Are they frozen? I freeze them, yeah. He says they taste like they're frozen, that's all. Really? Yeah. Him. They are frozen. Mm hmm Damn. More parsley. Mmm. Soggy. Strange taste inside. They're definitely not fresh. Uh, on that uh, Cajun salmon, you want you still want the uh, sautéed spinach and the pesto, or...? Yeah. What is that? That is pesto. Is it good? Well, it's just all separated and sort I of I curdled. I have no idea. It looks like an oil slick. Yeah, and it's never on the sides. It's, it's usually served on the fish. When I saw him the Sam, and he did have something to say about the pesto sauce. It was tainted, so to speak. And the salmon is just solid inside and dry. And God, you can't expect customers to come and pay for that. You definitely have to try my homemade Greek cookies. And I bet you you're going to say you never had a better one. Oh, Chef Ramsey. He's a lot like me. I love him. When you eat that cookie, you lift it up and you buy it. <laughs> Mate. You got water? I'm surprised you guys are still alive. <laughs> he just choked on your mother's cookie. I mean, I don't have an answer. I don't. Before Gordon passes on his comments to the chef and the owners, he decides to observe a dinner service to get a more complete picture of the problems in the restaurant. The New England clam chowder smells fishy. Hot roast and it's cooked and we cooked and we cooked. It's a little bit too pinky for me. Is it I like it well done? Yeah. Sure, sure, whatever you like. Yeah, it's a little cold. I'm telling you the truth, it's cold. It is cold. This is so sad. So Set. With customers complaining in the restaurant, Gordon looks to the owner to solve the problems. Sir, like I said, if you think I scammed, do me a favor, do what you gotta do. But I would have no one thing before you make the phone call. Not in front of customers getting here. Oh my god. Oh my. After being disappointed with the front of the house, it was time to check out the engine room of the restaurant, the kitchen. Yeah. He said this is cold and feel the plate. It is cold. No, it's not cold. It's not. Hey, guys, these plates are stone cold. If the plate was cold, would you take it out, Diane? Yeah. You would. They put it up, I take it. Right. No, it's all right. I don't worry about it. What's your uh, fascination with the parsley on the plate? I, 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 I just happen to wait like the parsley looks, to be honest with you. It stinks. It's dried parsley. Yeah. It's a sign of a dated Russian. Sprinkle it on your wife, but not on the plates. He may not like the way I cook. If he doesn't like the way I cook, but that's his opinion. Oops. Oh, God. Why aren't they cleaning it? I got a few pieces. This is extraordinary. Stop there. Come here. Cow can you walk past that pay them to work in it? Yeah. I mean, he just spilled a, bu a bucket of tomato sauce. Why can't you say something to him about cleaning up his mess? Chef Doug does not listen to a word I say. But sometimes I'm not in the mood. What is going on? Oh, no, he's got a mop. Peter, Peter. One second. Did you hear what I said? I heard you. I didn't ask you to go mop up there. Used to doing it? Oh, 
God, oh that's not the right answer, me. bud. What a sad. Oh, can I clean it now? While Peter cleans up the mess on the floor. When was the last time this place was clean? Gordon realizes that this is part of a bigger problem. Oh my God. Coming up. This is disgusting. Gordon gets up early to investigate. You kill whatever customers we got left. But what he finds makes him wish he'd never got up. Look at that. You didn't see that? I didn't see it. I've, I've eaten, eaten it. it. And owners Peter and Irene suffer the consequences. I'm closing it down. Nothing's been cooked in here this evening. Coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. Before the staff comes in to prepare for lunch, Gordon arrives early to do a thorough investigation of the kitchen. Oh, God. What is that? Twice baked potato. Thank I missed that one twice. Oh. So dirty. God. When was that cleaned? Oh, my God. What is that? This is 10,000 times worse than I thought it would be. <laughs> Looks like lava. <laughs> and crap. Kitchen health hazard. Bingo. My fresh lobster ravioli. Soggy. Strange taste inside. Fresh. My <laughs> I've eaten it. General hygiene in refrigeration. Oh. No. So that's the pesto I had for lunch. Just look at the colors in there. Look at that. It's moldy. It's now lunchtime. The chefs are preparing. Customers are getting ready to eat. But Gordon steps in. Can I just have a quick word with both of you? Two seconds. No yeah. problem. When was the last time you went in the kitchen and had a little look around? Once every Tuesday or so, we'll go in the wall, scrub them down. God, when was that cleaned? Irene, you mentioned earlier about how clean right. this place was. The Board of Health came here, and believe me, they gave us 95, so the place is clean. That's 95 out of 100. Right. I really don't think you've got any idea. Can I just take you in there? Sure, come yeah. on, let's go. Yeah. Uh, is that on order? Yeah. You just stop. Charles, stop what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. Are you aware how filthy your kitchen is? Yes, ma'am. How dare you cook me a lunch out of this kitchen, knowing full well how filthy your kitchen is? So you don't even walk behind the line. Look at under I here. I scrubbed everything. Come here, two I seconds, Peter. Get your f head under there. Doug, look under there. Why have we got Drink. product in there? Why are you using it? Why is it not condemned? To have another chef in my face about my kitchen, I'm pissed off, boy. me. Even a crouton's gone moldy. Oh, my God. Would you eat that? Come on. Let's go in the walk-in fridge. Let's... Well, I'm amazed how... I'm amazed how you're so cool and chilled at this. You know that? Dog food in the fridge? That's the fish bag. It's what? God. Actually, that, that's, that, that was for me, actually. That's for you? Yeah. Don't it. eat it. Don't uh, eat it. I already had. You've eaten it. Smell that, then. Smell sour. Probably sour on the outside. Are you mad? Sour on the outside? Oh, come on. It's pork. The pork was mine. That's my, that's my personal meal. Oh, no. I didn't expect this kind of a mess that I've seen. I'm very upset. I mean, that's the only way to put it. Very disappointed, very upset. What's this? That's a chicken uh, Valdostano. Does that look half cooked? Yes. Started to be cooked. Yes. Thank you. I'm, I'm just not a throwaway person. That was cooked on Friday, and I had to recook it Saturday. That's what you got to do. You kill whatever customers we got left. What have you got to say about it, as someone that owns the place? When it comes to the freshness of the food, that really falls on just the chef alone. Can we get out of here? It's his name. It's fully his fault. Get me the bowl of pesto, please, Charles. What was my main course in there yesterday? You had a Cajun salmon? That's right. What was the sauce? 
The sauce was a pesto sauce. Bring it over, please. You're right. I didn't see it. You didn't see that? I didn't see that. I, I... You got glasses on the man. The, the pesto sauce, that was not forgivable. I'm humiliated about that, believe me. Positively. Positively. Now, this is not a time, hey, to laugh and take the piss out of me. I've eaten this What's going on, Peter? I'm surprised that Gordon didn't make him eat it. And this is scrubbed every Tuesday. Oh, every week. You got the nerve to tell me that you clean the walls every Tuesday. Touch the off, will you? Touch the wall, you dirty pig. This is disgusting. I'm closing it down. How many's booked? About 20. 20. Forget it. Get the place steam clean from head to tail. I don't care, but we're not cooking a cookie out of here. Marilyn? Marilyn? Yes, sir? Nothing's coming out of this kitchen. OK, fine. When Chef Ramsay shut down the restaurant, it was shocking, of course. And his oh, face was all yeah. red. Chef Ramsay, he was really upset. OK, should I tell the customers outside to leave? Please, switch it off. We're going down now. OK, thank you for coming. But the Chef Ramsay, actually, he wants to open up tomorrow. For all my years, we never shut up a kitchen and tell the customers to go home, never. And that's, that's an embarrassment. Well, not, even, not here anyway. Why don't you clean when you're quiet? I stay busy all day from 11 o'clock when I walk in the door until 5.36 when we get tables. Do Every day, doing preparation every day by myself. Gordon Ramsay, he can go off on somebody for absolutely no reason. It's impossible to clean everything, and he just doesn't get it. What do you find so funny, Charlie? What do you find? What, what's funny for you? What, what, what do you want me to do, stand here and start crying or something? What do you want me to do? I don't know what you want to do. Kiss your ass and say, I think you've done a great job in clean on Tuesday nights when you f***ed out on your crack doing f*** all. Are you going to do anything or are you going to stand and stare at me? Is that your weakness? You don't know how to run staff? No, no. this is what they keep telling you. And this is what I keep telling you all this time. Tell them to shut the up. Tell them to get out of here. Close the doors if you don't like him. Take charge. This is what he's looking for a man. And that's what I'm looking for you to become. Where's your fire? This is your mom. Where's your fight? You are running a business. You're lucky. I'm not standing here with a writ on your ass about being food poisoned. I've never done that before, closed down a restaurant, but that was a nightmare. Seas gate open. Close the place. After spending 24 hours cleaning. What a difference. You've got your kitchen back yes. to where it should be, yeah? It's now day four. And if there's any hope of relaunching the restaurant, Gordon has to get through to the chefs. Right, Doug. We're going to do a quick special for tonight, yes? We're just going to do a pan seared pan. So with some crushed new potatoes. It's time for this seafood restaurant to put fresh fish back on the menu. Tomatoes, basil, and just bang. Just makes it a little bit more vibrant, yeah? yeah? I've been doing this for 38 years. I'm not happy at all. I think he needs to back off. That's is beautiful, huh? It's come down to the point where I really don't listen anymore. Let him do what he wants. Fresh and fragrant. OK, can we take it through? I want Peter, yeah, and Irene to taste it, yes? Irene, I want you to taste that first. I want you to taste it as well. So it's a fresh, vibrant tomato sauce. It's very good. Yeah. It's awesome. You don't want to taste? No, I'm good. Taste it. Taste it, Dad. No, I'm good, thank you. I didn't try the fish that Gordon had made because I, I basically know what striped bass tastes like. If you are a chef of 38 years experience, just tell me why you didn't want to taste that. I know what striped bass tastes like, and I'm, I'm familiar with this. Doug, one more chance. You sure you don't want to taste that? Positive. He didn't even have the courtesy of trying. God, that's the first time a guy's never tasted my food. Uh, now I'm seriously insulted. Now that Gordon has shown them how to make the special, it's time to see Doug and Charlie in action. OK, good. Off we go. 
I don't expect my cooking to be like his. I don't expect my bass to be like his. At this point, I don't even want to be here. That's bird, Charlie. What are you doing? What the f is this? Can he not cook a piece of fish? Chef Ramsey, I don't want to have listen to what he had to say again. The fish is cooked to f They f piss all over the place. Oh, yeah, whatever. I don't know how both of you can even attempt to call yourself chefs. You know that? Four star chef for Unbelievable. I am so pissed off. A sous chef that can't cook fish, a head chef that's just moping around doesn't care. This is a joke. I've seen all I need to see. Your head chef is lazy, dirty, and he shouldn't be anywhere near a kitchen. He's destroying your business quicker than you can realize. Couldn't even be bothered to taste what I'd cooked. In 21 years of cooking, that is a first for me. You asked me to come here to work and fix your business. Mm -hmm. I can't do it with those two in there. You have got to make the biggest decision you've ever made since your father passed away. Whether you continue to work with the dead wood that have drifted into your business, or whether you wake up, get a grip, and be the boss, the one thing that I need you to carry out for me, I want you to go in the kitchen and ask Doug and Charles to take it off. Doug got too comfortable in being lazy. There's no excuse for that. Decision's yours. And I realized at that moment that something had to be done. Do you agree with me? 100%. Irene, how does that sound to you? Doug's wood is horrible. Fire them, fire them in the spot. That's what I want to hear. That's what he wants to hear. They're not good enough for this place. Guys, both off tomorrow. Uh, are we done here together? Yep. You sure? Yes. I kind of expected it from the way that we work tonight. So, am I a little uh, upset about it? Yeah, I'm a little bit upset. Right here. Right now, I'm humiliated. It's just oh, freaking hard. It's hard. It's now day five, and the seascape is still closed. Before Gordon can solve the chef crisis, he has to light a fire under Peter. So this exercise is a way that you let go, release oh, yeah. and let go, yes? You need that right now. Release the tension. OK, good. Get in the ring. You ready? Come on, man. Stand on here like that. On there. One, two, bang. When you release that third one, one, two, boom, bang. You shout and scream. One, two, ah! Come on, you <laughs> sucker! Get good! Good! I'm not hearing anything inside you. You're still holding it in. Let's go. Now I can feel it. Now I can see it, boss. Come on. And again. And again. Come on! I don't know what's happened, but the last three or four punches have been stronger and stronger. Because I realized how much of an ass I was. Hey, what way? You've been honest with me. Uh, I kind of lied to you. I knew my kitchen was dirty. I did what I've been doing my whole life, keeping the peace and keeping myself down. You've got no reason to keep yourself down, Peter. Well, my father never gave me a compliment, told me I sucked, never could do nothing with my life. He was a great worker, yeah, but didn't give a about his own son who cared about him. I let it destroy me. He died before I could prove him wrong. You're doing that now. Prove him wrong. You're right. Let's go. <laughs> I blamed my father for my failures, and it was myself. 
Can't blame him no more. Come on! Come on! Prove him wrong! Finally! How do we get this gym in the restaurant? While Gordon was having a breakthrough with Peter, his design team was remodeling the restaurant. Hello, hello, hello. hello Welcome. Hello. Come in, come in, come in. Oh, Please, Irene, awesome. come through. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The color, Irene? The I color? love it. I love it. Definitely. Peter. The red definitely does it. Look how warm it is. New wood. It's absolutely gorgeous. We definitely needed the change, and thank God, Chef Ramsey, you did it all. You brought exactly the whole seascapes back, even the bar stool. It gives it back the old seascape charm. Wait to see it full of people. It is gorgeous. Yeah, Marilyn, how do you feel, my darling? Because this must go back in time for you. I can't believe the change. Can you? I'm overwhelmed. I really am. Look at your pictures, and miss. And to see my picture up on the wall makes me feel really good that I am maybe part of the history of this restaurant. I might even cry. It looks almost like the old seascape. It has been brought back to life, definitely. I think it's wonderful. I really do. Uh, Peter and ladies, tonight is the most important night in the history of seascape. Tonight, we're relaunching. I am so thrilled. I am so thankful. I never expected this. Never. I I'm still dreaming. I'm still dreaming. With the staff reinvigorated by the new decor, the focus now goes to the kitchen. How you doing, Scott? Peter. After scouring the local community, Gordon has found a new head chef to replace Doug. Got Definitely. the bull by the horns and <laughs> yeah, go for it. Yes. And with only hours until relaunch, it's straight to work preparing the new menu. OK, the tomato and basil sauce. The idea behind this is just giving it yeah, a little bit of uh, vibrance. Nice, clean, fresh flavor, yeah? Yeah, a little bit of basil. Don't rush. No. Find your feet, yeah? Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm fine. No, I can see you're nervous. OK, good. We've involved some of the old classics from Seascape and put a modern interpretation on them. OK, let's go through it together. Fresh, homemade crab cake. Fresh pesto. Salmon. Clams casino. Fried calamari. Surf and turf. OK, any questions? Where's the fork? <laughs> All around, it's a great menu. God must have sent them. I love this stuff. With the new menu and decor all in order, the next step was to turn Peter into a proper maitre d'. Peter, Jean-Baptiste. Jean-Baptiste runs my restaurant in New York. OK. Yeah. His parents are from Lyon, and he grew up in restaurants. OK. And I want him to spend some quality time now in just sort of grooming you. You're now getting polished. Uh, first thing is, how do you feel um, about uh, wearing jackets? Too stiff. Maybe we can get one for tonight, don't you think? I'm not the most fashion savvy guy around. Um, sh show me how you walk around tables. A nice flowing motion. Is everything right so far? This is you walking. That's every time I see you, it's like this. Running around like a baby rhinoceros trying to have a Can you just walk nice and slowly? Put your shoulders back. Nice and slow. There you go. There. Look. Nice. And again. Lovely. Actually, it's going to be two seven tops over here. I got to prove myself to everybody, the town of Islip, uh, to myself, to my employees, to my mother, to my father. Now I just want 30 seconds with you. Mm -hmm. It's a fight to reestablish this place. Oh, yeah, I understand that. My dad passed away two years ago, so there's no way I can talk to my father. So I feel this is the closest I can. How are you feeling? Nervous. Last chance, huh? New decor, new menu, new chef, and now, I hope, a new boss. Speaking. For the first time in this guy's life, he's got to step up to the mark, come out of the shadow of his father, and prove to his mother and himself he's more than capable of running this business. Let me have the phone. No, no, no. The phone stays here. Because if he doesn't make it tonight, he's going to sink. Tonight, 
is the beginning of the new seascape. Why before it? You're sweating. I'm looking at the bigger picture. I gotta prove to my father that I can control what's going on. Completely new menu. I'll have the uh, clams casino. I'm having the seared striped bass. Great. I'm gonna deposit it in my barrel. Thank you very much. The wait staff is revitalized by the influx of customers and the new attitude at the seascape. And table five fire, please. First ten tables are here. Um, atmosphere is electric. It smells like a proper restaurant. Peter now has to get a grip, understand what's going on, and host the room. We're looking at probably about a 20-minute wait. 100 customers were coming at us and coming at us hard. We were swamped. How are we going to see those people and how long, how long time they're going to wait? Now it starts to be messy. Yeah, Trust right. me, now it's messy. So far, <laughs> I think it's not going that well, to be honest. All right, Peter, this is where we need to step up again now. I'm going to go talk to you. Come on, we've got to step up big time. Let's go, huh? With the restaurant packed, the new chef and the veteran waitresses are about to be put to the test. Everybody keeps taking food out of here. Is this one I got? It's not no, no, me. No. OK, then it must be Diane. OK. Oh, oh my god. god. Does he want me to take I'm really pissed out? off right now. I'm going to have a heart attack. These girls aren't used to being busy. Come on. OK, this is where it's really critical that a manager starts running his bloody dining room, because Peter's restaurant is now in the Orders are getting backed up. The service is starting to become slow. Kitchen's falling behind. Peter, you've got to start cracking the whip. The kitchen is so backed up. I'm so sorry. It's coming, babe. It's coming. I'm hoping everything would go so perfect, and it's just not. The food's just not coming out. I've been waiting for the uh, entrees. It's like 6 o'clock, 6.30. What's the matter? My two kids still haven't eaten. And what were they getting? What were they getting? Pasta and mussels. Mussels are an appetizer. OK, I'll, okay. I'll tell. Oh, Scott. What? Table three did not get their appetizers. I mean, they've only been here since 6.30. That's gonna, that goes on the back of the line. That, you got to wait no, no, now. Hold on. Let's get one thing done at a time. I fired it a long time ago, and... Man, no, no. When you fired it, it still goes on the back of the line. Peter, the wait staff here, they're too set in their ways. Oh, Scott, when I order the French on, you automatically make them for me, right? There's no one telling them what they can and can't do. They're just coming in. They're taking what they want. They're just grabbing food. Is that yours or mine, Diane? This, this is mine. It's very frustrating. I can't communicate when this is too stupid. Making sure the front of the house is in sync with the kitchen is Peter's responsibility. And Irene is losing her patience because he's not stepping up and taking control. Please, somebody pick up this food. My apologies. I'm sorry. Ma, what do you want? What are you doing? I can't believe this hasn't gone out. Ma, what, what do you want, Mom? Kill me, brother. Take charge. Mom, you know how to rip into me for two days saying I'm never going to grow up. Shut the up. Well, this is why I never grow up. Mom. You are the boss. Start acting like one. Take charge. Don't do this, Mom. Take charge. All the little things mushroomed into a big thing. I'm sorry. We're trying the best we can. That's the table that just walked out. Can you find out where Peter is yeah. and ask him what he's doing, please, yeah. yeah? Peter? I don't know what I'm doing. Peter. Peter. I'm ready to give up my reins. Yeah. My father right now is turning over in his grave. It's the big relaunch of the seascape, and the restaurant is at full capacity. But with the front of the house not communicating with the kitchen... There's way too many people touching food in this kitchen. My apologies. I'm sorry. Peter is losing control. Peter, I need two seconds with you. I really want you to shine tonight. You've got no Thank idea. You. Take okay. control. When you're not happy with certain things, get it off your chest. Think back to the boxing ring. Yes, I'm not right. asking you to be vile. No, 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 you're right. I'm just asking you to run your to business. To not hold it in no more. Gordon is 100% right that tonight, I got to prove to myself, to my employees, to my mother, that I'm willing to take the challenge and be a boss. You can do it. Can I ask for one favor? Of course you can. Can I have a hug? A hug? Why not? Here we go. Let's go. Oh. Yes. Let's do it tonight. Let's go. Hey, do Let's it. Do it. Yes? We got it. I'll try to stand up straight. OK. All right, guys, we're starting it up. I know what has to get done. I might piss some people off, but sorry, we got to get it done right. We are making a plan right now. OK. Take this off. OK. There we go. We make a new one. Right. At a critical time in the night, Gordon's pep talk has finally inspired Peter. I asked John Baptiste to go back into the kitchen to start an expedite the food to make the food go out faster so we can sit the people down. 
And just do me a favor, take the order and give it a new number and explain to John Baptiste what it is. Now you can talk to Marilyn while she's here, yeah. and I'll find okay. out from Diane. It's what they call improvising. Good. You're gonna get your four top, Marilyn's gonna get her three top here. You had cut in the bar table, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you. Okay, here we go, finally. You're on a roll, Marilyn, you're on a roll, baby. I felt like I was back when I first opened up, when the passion was still here, we were moving and grooving. Finally got everything under control. The flounder is just out of this world. Considering where the seascape was just days ago, the reopening was a success. Please, take your seat. Sit down. Yes. Okay. What a night. It was only just literally a few days ago that this place was closed. We met the chef today for the first time. To put that standard out, job well done. Finally, I feel Peter actually took charge. So I'm really, really happy. We know where to work at it. To, to get it yes. better, yes. But for me, I know damn well, customers tonight will come back. Yes. You have to seriously continue running your business. Yes. As the week progressed, Gordon worked with the new chef to come up with a vibrant new menu, making sure to introduce fresh produce from the local vendors. You are the luckiest owner in the world to have this boat in your backyard. Yes. I'm telling you. Then, to endear the restaurant back into the community, Gordon created an annual chowder cook-off that was judged by the town mayor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the seascape. Yes. I quite like that little burning sensation in the back of my throat. It's good. Different. The winner, Joe Barini. Well done. Please come back and taste it on the menu for dinner. Scott, the new chef, whipped the kitchen into shape. You're not doing that table first. This one right here, please. Okay. I'm sorry. Ordering a crab cake, two oysters. And Marilyn brought back one of Seascape's old traditions, tableside flambe. <laughs> The place was alive and everybody was smiling. Isn't it lovely? Oh, it's wonderful. If you've got some room, don't be scared to ask for more. Yes? <laughs> Last but not least, a new respect has been established by a mother for her son. All right, Mom, let's start it up. Uh, OK, we have a party of six that they call. OK. So you're leaving us tonight, huh? Yes. It is amazing what he did. He taught me to stand up and be the owner. Love and support, yes? Mm. Mm. Love you, man. Love Take you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Not at all. Stand strong, buddy, yes? I will. Up. Yes. I got it. One, two, three. Excellent. I got it. I feel very grateful to Chef Ramsey. I will never forget what the man did. He put his heart and soul into this place. He did save us. Even though Gordon successfully restored the seascape to its former glory, Peter accepted an offer that he couldn't refuse and sold the restaurant. Next time on Kitchen Nightmare, Gordon finds a beautiful old restaurant in chaos. Read the ticket! The menu has customers turned off. Your risotto is disgusting. Send it back, yeah. The chef has lost his way. Do I still have passion for food? Please help me! No. And the owner is a control freak. I don't believe there's a better operator or restaaurateur than me. You're a fake. Well, you're a fake. Can Gordon restore order to the old stone mill? Are we scared about being busy? Yes! Next time on Kitchen Nightmares.